Last time on Higher Things Video Shorts. You can't trust the Bible or your source of information. Actually, the Bible can be considered historically reliable. Piffle! The New Testament was written long after the time of Jesus, and who knows how many revisions the Bible has gone through since it was written. It's doubtful that the Bible you hold in your hands today is anywhere close to the original. Well, if what you're saying is true, that would be a problem, so we should test it. Yes, but how? It's already been tested, actually. When you judge the ancient manuscripts that we have from the New Testament biblical writings with the same standards used to judge other ancient writings, it shows just how reliable these texts are. I'm intrigued. Well, the first is the bibliographical test, and it has two parts, the time gap and the number of manuscripts that we have today. So the time gap is the amount of time between the date that the manuscript was originally written and the earliest copies that we have today. Now, the entire New Testament was written by the end of the first century. Poppycock! It was written much later than that. The Bible wasn't even completed until the third century. While the earliest manuscripts that we have for some fragments of the New Testament texts come from as early as 114 AD. So there's evidence that the Bible was completed long before the third century. For almost the entire New Testament, there was a time gap of less than 150 years. Well, a lot can happen in 150 years. That doesn't sound very reliable to me. Okay, well, let's take the writings of Plato. They were written in 400 BC. The oldest manuscripts that we have are from 900 AD. So that's a time gap of 1,300 years. And yet, it's an acceptable time gap. Uh, Caesar's Gallic Wars has a time gap of 1,000 years, and Homer's The Iliad has a time gap of 400 years. All of these writings pass the time gap test. They are seen as historically reliable. How many ancient biblical manuscripts exist today? Well, for the New Testament, there are over 5,000 copies in existence today, mostly because Christians recognized these writings as scripture and immediately started copying them down as soon as they received them and started circulating them throughout the church. How many copies do we have of, of Caesar's Gallic Wars? Ten. So, uh, Plato's writings? Seven. The Iliad? 643. Ah! Ugh, that still pales in comparison, doesn't it? I dare say it does not matter. <laughs> well, it does help us to know that we've got an accurate account of what was written by the apostles and received by the early church, and this comes very soon after Christ's resurrection and ascension. So with the discovery of all of these texts, theologians have been able to compare them to one another and determine their accuracy. Also, beginning in the second century, there is external evidence outside of the biblical text that shows that these texts were, were known very early on in the Christian life. And that's the second test, the external test. The early church fathers quoted the New Testament abundantly. Their quotations from the early church fathers were so numerous and so widespread that almost the entire New Testament could be reproduced from their writings alone, even if none of the New Testament manuscripts had ever been discovered. But none of that proves that the Bible is God's word, or even that it's true. Yes, you're right, but it does show the historical reliability of the text that we have. And we should be pretty confident that the biblical text that we have today is reliable. I understand that's a lot for us to digest today, so I'll talk more about how we know the Bible is God's word in our next video.